Hey everyone, in this video, Ben Shapiro destroys Sam Harris's simplistic understanding of religion's influence on science and its historical development. This is part one of a two-part reaction series to this conversation between the two men, so if you want to see part two, be on the lookout. But with that, let's get right into it capable of understanding by any sentient human being. So I don't believe that all human beings in the absence of religion are immoral people who go around murdering their neighbors and, and raping their sisters. Uh, I think that, that and in fact, this is pretty well embedded in even Judaic philosophy, the idea that there is a sort of natural law theology where you as just a normal person know not to kill people and know not to steal and know to set up courts of law. This is what they call the seven, the seven commandments to Noah. Um, but Right, uh, part of the Bible and um, also part of Ben's portion of the Bible is because uh, if if you do not know this by some miracle, Ben Shapiro is an Orthodox Jewish man. Um, but yeah, the idea is that um, God writes on the heart. So even if you're not um, explicitly religious or aware, some uh, some basic moral instincts and basic moral sense should still be there. So that's right. The idea is that anyone can basically discover these things. And there are universals across culture about you're not supposed to murder your brother. Um, yeah. But the, the biblical reading is that to reach a more sophisticated level of morality that leads to a sort of right-based society we see here, you at least need the, the catalyzing enzyme of, of a, Judeo, a Judeo-Christian religion in order, in order to get here. That, that would, I think, be the, the most Sam rationalistic argument on behalf of Judeo-Christian values. Hey, but, but where is here again? Uh, here would be a civilization that values individual rights above the values of the collective, uh, that, right. that says that, that people are to be treated to use the biblical phrase as made in the image of God, that we should treat individuals as made in the image of God, uh, that, that that does not happen in the absence of a Judeo-Christian value system. That's that's the religious argument. Uh, so the, and, and which- Although is, that is more of a historical argument. That, 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 right, that, that's what I'm saying. It's a rationalistic argument because the, the, the deeply religious argument would be God said so, so do it, right? But that's not the argument that I think is the most compelling because that only works if you believe in God and if you believe in revelation. So that's not the argument that I tend to make because I, I don't find it intellectually convincing. It's an argument from authority, which of course is not particularly convincing. So I tend to make the historical argument, which is that history brought us to, that, that the reason we are at this point in history is because without... Shapiro is taking a very long time to uh, pose this uh, pretty basic concept. Um, I, I think it might just because he's predicting like what Harris is going to say and he kind of wants to like hit all of those points before here uh harris even gets a chance but yeah i mean the point is is that the idea that human beings are inherently innately valuable in the terms that we should all get individual rights that matter more than the good of everybody yeah you have to be religious to believe that you have to have some sort of religious understructure to be anything other than utilitarian basically um and this is utilitarian in the sense of it's just, it does the good outweigh the bad. Um, individual rights are a complete non-issue. Um, so yeah, you gotta, you gotta start with some a priori assumptions to get there. That particular catalyzing enzyme, you don't get what you have here, which is why the West and Western civilization crop up in a Judeo-Christian system, but don't crop up in, for example, Islamic countries, and Islam's been around for a thousand years. So what do you, number one, what do you make of that argument? That's interesting. Uh, he just like sideswiped Islam there. So he's not even making a religious versus atheist argument. He's saying Judeo-Christian values versus everything. Um, that is interesting. I guess it makes sense. At the time, Harris was famous for um, knocking Islam, especially. I mean, he knocked all religions, but um, that was the thing that got him in hot water. And then I want to get into, so where do you think morality comes from? Right. Uh, well, a few points. I mean, one, I, I'm not convinced by that historical argument. I think you can you can cherry pick the data either way and come up with, with a different conclusion. And the even if I agreed with it, it wouldn't make the case I think you want to make because it, it would be an instance of a what's called the genetic fallacy, which is if we even if we granted that that our respect for individual rights say came from a Judeo-Christian tradition. It doesn't mean that it can only come from from there or that it even is best gotten from there. That's true, but that's not really what Ben is saying. But, or that I, I hope that's not what he's saying. Uh, the, the smarter version of the argument is like, sure, maybe you could get it from something else, but we haven't. We've had thousands of years. Atheism has existed for a while. It hasn't shown a way to get from point A to point B here. So maybe don't risk the foundation of individual rights on the gamble that you'll find a different way to get there later. 
I, it's, again, you might be noticing a theme with if you've been sticking around. Um, it's not about that change being good is impossible. It's that getting rid of what we have now is very, very risky. And if you're a temperamentally cautious or conservative person, you're loath to that sort of thing. Uh, and, I, and I would say that it, it actually hasn't come principally from there. And there are many ways. So, if, for instance, you could say that that Christianity, in particular, was responsible for, in part, responsible for the fall of the Roman Empire. Right? So, the, so Christianity undermined uh, the notion that the, that the the Roman emperor was uh, a god. You know, it, it made it harder to recruit true soldiers, and they had to farm it out to mercenaries. And you know, it eroded you know uh, what you might call traditional Roman values. And right. then, you know, the Western Empire fell and, you know, we, we ushered in the Dark Ages. Clever Sam. Um, and insofar as there was a reboot to civilization at that point, it was largely the result of classical, the, the learning and, and the philosophical insight of antiquity being preserved by, of all people, in the, the in Muslim the Islamic world. Right. I think it's, you can, you can have it any way you want looking at history, but it just doesn't get you there in terms of the, the moral content and, the, and in this case, you know, the political or, or social content coming from the Bible or, or any other religious text. So then why, then why here? Meaning like why in Judeo-Christian civilization, civilization, but not Islamic civilization? Because you mentioned rediscovery yeah. of Aristotle and, and reuse of Aristotle in 10th and 11th centuries was really beginning, you know, in, in the Islamic world long before Aquinas really repopularized it in the in the 13th and 14th centuries. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, I, I think it's, you know, from my point of view, it's impossible to ignore the influence of Islam. I mean, Islam is its own ideology and set of dogmatisms that are inflexible and at odds with the spirit of science in, uh, fundamentally. And despite the fact that there was a brief period where there seemed to be some, you know, happy convergence between scientific and mathematical insight and Islam, for the most part, Islam has been hostile to, you know, a real intellectual life. And in, in a way that Christianity was hostile, even when uh, uh, the scientific worldview was, was struggling to be born in, in you know, the, the 16th century mm -hmm. and the 15th century, uh, the, uh, what, what we have historic... By the way, to give the devil his due, not to call Sam the devil, that, I mean, that is true, and it's born out of the same type of caution, right? You can imagine Christians in the 15th and 16th century essentially saying this is new uh what we have is pretty good uh let's not risk everything um but this case is not quite as strong because of circumstances things right now in the 21st century are infinitely better than they were in the 15th or 16th century we have a lot more to lose in terms of prosperity and stability than they did um, and then the other thing is, is that the threat posed is a little bit lighter. Um, just the process of science, the idea of like, oh, is the sun a disc or is it a big ball of gas? Is the earth flat or is it not? Um, there is a bit of a originist history there. Um, the, the Catholic Church wasn't really as opposed to a heliocentric mo model as, um, as high school books might have led you to believe. But that said... They, they were opposed to this, and that's a lot less threatening than what we're dealing with now. The types of things we are being asked to abandon, um, the idea of not just scientific process as part of the knowledge gaining process, but the embracement of pure rationality is uh, something that we've been asked for. Um, and then on top of that, and with that um, comes, you know, the abandonment of things like men and women existing um, and other and other strange and uh, zany requests. So I would say that I would give the devil his due on the idea that the same, um, the same motivation of caution is at, was at play for those religious people in the 15th and 16th century, but uh, the, the facts of the case, the circumstances of the actual case are a bit different today. ...is a, a real war of ideas. And I mean, I mean, just, hey. you, just, you can be crystallized in the moment where, you know, Galileo was shown the instruments of torture and put under ha house arrest by people who refused to look through his telescope, right? I mean, so that was the genius of religion paired with the with the emerging genius of science uh, in that room. Well, to be fair, I mean, yeah. Galileo was originally sponsored by the church and so is Copernicus, but the... but the Oh, look, Ben, ben pointed it out. Yeah, they weren't really as opposed to that as as um, you would be led to believe. I remember they had, a, there was like a weird esoteric reason they went after Galileo, I forget what it was. 
the yeah. but, but, but there's but no only, question there's yeah. a backlash from the church to this stuff. Yes, and, right. and, the, but, and the backlash makes sense because there is a intellectual progress on questions of you know just you know how the cosmos is organized or where it came from or how life began. Um, you know, all of these questions uh, are the, the the scientific answers to which are are, are in zero sum contest with the doctrines found in the books now there it's i disagree with this i don't think it's a zero-sum context uh contest there are some things sure that could be zero-sum but fundamentally i don't think religion and science are really opposed um peterson has talked about this um about how universities were basically monasteries that they were basically the same thing um i think sam is a bit too pessimistic on this i think religion and scientific discovery can more often than not work together. And I think that in a healthy society, they will have to coexist and be complementary forces, each in its respective and proper role. Um, so he's um, he's got a little bit of a uh, Hobbesian view on this. It's a cutthroat winner-take-all religion versus science, but I, I don't think it has to be that way, not for most things anyway. True that there are religious people, and now even the Pope, who have relaxed their adherence to tradition enough to make room for something like evolution, right? But it's still, it is still a problem. No, not a super new idea. I mean, right, uh, uh, Aquinas was talking about this in the 13th century. And... Yeah, ben is, um, ben is giving Sam a hard time, too. So, yeah, that's just one example. He's going to give you one example of what I was talking about. 14th century, the, the idea that, uh, that if it was in science and it was contradicted by the book, then you're misreading the book, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty old idea. Yeah, yeah but, in, that, in but that is to world. subvert science rather than the book in Aquinas' case. I mean, Aquinas thought heretics should be put to death, right? His argument for, for that, for, for capital punishment, for heresy, and Augustine made the same argument. He thought, Augustine uh, thought they should be tortured, right? So that those two great lights of the Catholic Church gave us the Inquisition and gave us, you know, more than a century. Well, I think it's also fair to say that they were rather instrumental in the development of modern science. So the the, the Dark Ages, no. uh, first of all, I think the Dark Ages are, are a bit of a, an exaggeration in terms of the Dark Ages themselves had, saw a, a massive a massive growth in technology and architecture, for example. I mean, Gothic cathedrals are built during the Dark Ages. But, oh, sure, sure. But the, yeah. but, yeah, the, but that's, the that's, scientific, that's the scientific science. world is, well... Virtually every major university in the Western world was sponsored by the Catholic Church, and I'm not—I'm not a great Catholic defender. Look, look, uh, I get, again, great minds, I suppose. I promise you, I have not seen this recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's—it's not to say that Harris's point is fundamentally wrong about how you know in the Dark Ages, um, religion and science were often at odds, but. Shapiro is doing, I think is an important thing, is just adding context and adding nuance and, you know, poking at that narrative a little bit to show maybe it's actually not that cut and dry. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that reaction video. If you did, drop a like and please consider subscribing to see more. If you didn't, tell me why. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I want to have these conversations. If you want to see the rest of my content or explore the broader Pangburn universe that I'm a part of, click one of the buttons that should be floating around my head right about now. And as always, I hope to see you all out there engaging in the war of ideas.